Hi everyone, thank you for joining me here today. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Irene, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a full review of the Chanel Boy Bag that is sitting right behind me. So if you're interested to see my thoughts um, and the pros and cons, plus some mod shots and what fits inside, then let's get straight into this video. Before I get started into all the nitty gritty details of the Chanel boy bag that's sitting behind me, I just wanted to quickly say that I will have timestamps down below in the description bar uh, for the mod shots, for the um, what fits inside and pros and cons. That way you're not watching this very, I'm assuming, lengthy video um, from head to toe just in search of one piece of information. And if you guys have any other comments or anything, please leave it down in the comment section down below. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So behind me right here is my boy bag in the caviar leather, and this is in what people call the old medium size, and it's got the ruthenium hardware, as you can see. As a quick overview, this bag currently retails for 6,825 Canadian dollars plus taxes. So it is pretty hefty. It has gone up in price approximately $1,000 since I purchased this back in, I wanna say 2018, 2019. So it has gone up in price for sure as all Chanel do. In terms of dimensions, this bag measures 15 centimeters in height, 25 centimeters in length or across and then nine centimeters uh, in width or how much it'll stick out from your body so they, it is a little bit of a boxier bag and as you can see it is very structured moving on straight into the pros and the cons i'm going to start off with the pros first and i have kind of notes in front of me so if i'm looking down that is why so please bear with me I'm going to talk about uh, just quickly the style of this bag. It is a beautiful bag. It's what made me fall in love with this bag in the first place, made me put my name down on the wait list for it. And I was specifically looking for the black um, caviar with the ruthenium hardware in the medium size or the old medium size. Um, and it is such a beautiful overall aesthetically pleasing bag. And I loved that it is, it has that androgynous look, uh, whereas the classic flap is a very classic feminine style. I really like that this one has more of that edgy look that you can wear a lot easily when you're just wearing it casually out and about. So this is one reason why I went for this bag rather than the classic flap. Although looking back on it now, the classic flap has gone up insanely in price compared to this guy, which has gone up moderately. So maybe in terms of investment wise, it would have been better had I gone for a classic flap back when I was purchasing this bag, but nothing I can do about it now. I do love this bag a lot and it is absolutely stunning. Now, if you've been on my channel before and you've seen some of my other videos that I've created with my handbag collections, you'll know that I like a lot of versatility with my handbags. I usually like top handle ones or ones that have a lot of different ways that you can wear it. This bag doesn't have as much versatility as some of my other ones, but it does offer a little bit. So the long strap that it comes with okay can be adjusted in like two ways essentially and worn in technically three ways so the first way that can be worn is just like this on your shoulders and so this way it would hang down um a little bit below my hip or you can wear this as a crossbody. Now I am five foot four and you'll see in the mod shots later on that uh, this chain length uh, is actually really good worn crossbody for me. So I do love wearing this one as a crossbody. And then obviously the third way you can wear it is doubled up. So if I was to just double up the strap just as you would with a Chanel classic flap, you can wear this as a shorter shoulder bag this way as well. And this way it, feels a little bit more um, secure in comparison to just wearing it with one single strand like this on my shoulder. This way I feel like it has a tendency to slip off of my shoulder. So I do like to double this up and wear this as a shoulder bag for it to just stay on my shoulder a little bit better. Another pro about this bag that I really wanna bring up is that it is amazing quality. This leather is pristine the puffs are quite uh, puffy and they're very even and uniform in look um, the edge stitching everything looks immaculate and it's just stunning the leather in itself is gorgeous it's got that shine even though it is more of a pebbled leather and 
Another thing that I love about this bag is that it is extremely structured. Now, I know some people who have purchased this bag um, in this style, but in lambskin leather. And because generally people know that lambskin leather is more soft, is more delicate, it doesn't wear as well because this bag is supposed to be so structured. The lambskin leather doesn't hold up the structure as well and because of that that's why I got this leather instead and I find that in this leather you really can't go wrong it is beautiful as you can see it is very structured it doesn't give I don't need a bag organizer or a bag shaper inside of this at all and you can see like there is no bending or like creasing of the leather anywhere here I absolutely love how structured it is and I love how it holds up its shape so well on its own. Now moving on to the cons of this bag and it's funny because some of these cons kind of are very closely related to the pros as well that I've mentioned earlier but first off I want to say that the strap that I mentioned earlier it is not adjustable like you can slide it back and forth and wear it in these couple of ways but in terms of the actual strap length you're not able to adjust it. It looks like you can, but realistically, there is nothing to adjust it to. Like there's no other perforated holes that you can change the strap length. So that's one con for sure for me. And another thing is, as I kind of mentioned earlier too, the, when you wear this bag as like a shoulder bag over here on one shoulder, I find myself doing this a lot, trying to keep the bag up because it has a tendency to slide down. Um, I don't know, they tried to put a leather strap here already. I mean, I think that might be for more the weight and comfortable wearing of this bag, but this, tends to slide down on my shoulder and I'm constantly trying to like readjust it and push it back further up my shoulder so that my bag doesn't drop onto the ground. So that is another con that I have about this bag. The next point I want to make about the boy bag is that when you wear this crossbody, I mentioned that it wears beautifully crossbody in terms of the chain length on my frame and I am five foot four. But the problem is, you'll see this in the mod shots later on too, it does jut out quite a bit, sorry, right there. You can see that it juts out quite a bit from my body when I'm wearing it cross body. And so like when I put my hand up here, it feels like um, my hands are kind of sticking out like there, even though it's not, but it just feels like it juts out quite a bit from my body. When worn kind of to the side and the front here, it's okay. But generally speaking, I find that it is very boxy. And I mean, that's what lends itself to its beautiful structural shape of the bag. But it is quite a boxy bag. And I find that because this is actually my most expensive bag in my collection, I find it um, kind of nerve wracking to bring with me to places, even though it is in caviar leather, the fact that it is boxy, it does jut out, makes me nervous that I will um, rub it against something or have this get damaged in one way or another, which is not ideal. So that is another con that I have to mention. It is very boxy. It does jut out from my body when I wear it and it's not something I prefer. Another thing is that considering how boxy it is and how much space it takes up, it actually doesn't hold very much and I will show that later on. Um, with this bag, I find I do have to kind of play Tetris a little bit, Jenga, whatever you want to call it, with this bag and try to fit everything inside. Mind you, I'm not one that carries a lot in my bag to begin with. So the fact that I feel like this is kind of saying a lot, obviously this bag holds a lot more than my Chanel mini rectangle, but the problem is this bag is quite a bit bigger and I feel that it is tricky to maneuver things around in here sometimes. And another thing is this leather is very stiff, hence it holds up the structure of this bag very well, but I am very um, conscious about the creasing of my leather handbags. So a lot of times when you see used or pre-loved Chanel handbags on the resale market, what you'll see is on the back panel here, you will see a lot of creasing that is like a straight line that goes across here because what happens is when people open their top handle or their flat bags, um, it'll crease this leather back here. I hate that and I know it comes with wear and tear, but for me, I try to be very, very careful when I'm using this bag and it is such a stiff leather, it makes it difficult to get in and out when I'm trying to lift this and not crease that leather overly bad here. And as you can see, I have absolutely no creasing in this bag whatsoever. Like I'll show you in the different angles and how it reflects the light. 
you'll see there's absolutely no creasing in there and that is because I've been so careful since I've had this bag. When I do open it up, I try to open it up to like this point at most. I will not bend it further back to avoid the creasing. And because of that, like it just adds to um, how it's a little bit trickier to get in and out of and like right there that's about all i can open it up to without feeling like i'm going to you know ruin the leather in the back so then i open up to here and then i have to hold this stiff stiff leather because remember this is caviar leather so it's stiff so i'm trying to hold this here and like get or get things in and out of here which it just it's not the most ideal for me for sure um i do love this uh snap closure so I do love that, it's very convenient. Um, but in terms of the actual getting stuff in and out, with especially with this stiff flap, I am not a huge fan of that. Adding on to the list of cons here, this is something that I noticed a little bit after I purchased this bag and I've had it sitting in my display case for a while. Mind you, I have a display case that is like, um, it has closed doors, so it's a glass kind of. It's from Ikea, but basically it is kind of in an enclosed space. But sometimes when I take this bag out, I do notice something and it's very particular of me. I am quite picky, but I noticed that this bag, you see these ridges that kind of border the, the puffy quilting here, these ridges right here, they kind of dent in. So what I've noticed is that they actually can collect dust in here. So if you plan on getting this bag or if you have this bag and you're storing it, and especially if you're storing it in a place where maybe dust tends to collect, for example, in your closet and it's not in a, in a, like a closed case, just be careful about that because I've noticed that dust can definitely collect in the ridges here and it's hard to clean it out because this is the leather, you don't want to damage, you don't want to be scrubbing it in. And I find that because it has black stitching in here, any light dust will show up because it's a contrasting color than compared to the black um, stitching and the black thread they use to um, create this design. So that's another thing is it does collect dust in these ridges, which is a little bit annoying. Last thing I want to mention about this bag is, again, it has to do with the straps. I kind of forgot to mention it earlier, but these straps, you see these like grommets, or I don't know what they're called. I call it grommets. Um, sometimes the strap gets twisted in here and like, it's not a big deal, but it kind of does get annoying sometimes when you like it's twisting back and forth and it looks funny so like i can't get it to do it right now of course when i'm trying to show everyone on video but sometimes it twists in a funny way where it, way, where it like it kind of bunches up right here into like almost like a, it looks like a knot of chains and so you just it's just another small thing it's not hard to fix obviously because there is quite a bit of space here where you can easily maneuver those chains around and get it undone but it's just another thing you have to look for when you are uh, looking at this bag is that um, here it does, it can have the tendency to like twist and kind of get bunched up in a funny way, but nothing that is serious where you're gonna have to worry about your bag getting damaged in any way, shape or form. Now that I've shared with you guys the pros and cons of this bag, I'm going to move into mod shots and I'll show you guys what this bag looks like on my body. Time to show you guys what fits inside this bag. So I have this beauty right in front of me and I'm just gonna open up this latch here. It's kind of hard to do like this. All right, 
So inside this bag, I don't think I showed you guys what it looks like on the inside. And again, it is hard because I'm trying not to, um, you know, ruin the flap or the leather back here, but it's literally just one black hole and it's got one little uh, side pocket here, which is made out of like, it's just the, the lining, the interior cloth lining. And it's got my authenticity card that I keep back here. But otherwise it is literally just a black hole in here. Um, nothing crazy in here. I wanted to show you guys what could potentially fit in this bag. To start us off, I used to carry around my toiletry 15 around with me in the monogram print quite a lot. And I actually used this bag as like a catch-all when I was carrying the boy bag. So I just wanted to show you guys how it fits in here. So let's get this open right here. I can put this in here. As you can see, it fits really well in there. In fact, I can slip my phone in here as well and it would work perfectly. So I have my iPhone, I don't know what this is, the 11 Pro? It's not the biggest size though, it's like the regular size. But I can stick this in here to the side and it fits beautifully like that, okay? As you can see, there's still some room back here. So I could potentially fit um, these are my um, one of my key holders, my Prada key holder with my keys there. So I could slip that in, but it is a little bit of like a tighter fit as you can see. Like, actually, can I even fit this in here? Yeah, I can. As you can see, I just have to kind of play Jenga a little bit and lay my key fob thing right on top of my phone, that type of situation. And then maybe if I'm lucky, I might put this here but I would be careful putting lip glosses or things like that laying down like this because if you were to look at the side profile of this bag, um, let me see if I can show you, it is open right there. Do you see that gap? So if you were to tilt this bag, let's say upside down by accident, um, any small things that would be laying across on the top like this would potentially fall out and that would not be good. So as you can see, the toiletry 15, an iPhone, and um, a card, a key holder slash card holder from Prada fits well in here. Let's see what else I can jam in and see what other combinations we can have. I'm gonna take out the toiletry 15 here. And in exchange for the toiletry 15, I'm just gonna put in the Louis Vuitton mini pochette. And this is slightly smaller in dimension compared to the um, toiletry 15. So it should have more room once you put this in here instead of the toiletry 15. So if I put that in there, there's definitely like more room for sure. So in that case, let's just put in my phone anyways, because that's always a necessity. And I could probably put in, this is my other set of card holder slash key holder. This is the a Louis Vuitton key pouch, or they used to call it the key clay. So if I put this in here, it would fit no problem because it is very flat in profile. Um, and I would just probably sling my keys over to the side like that. And if I were to close this, let's see. Yeah, it works perfectly fine. What else could I stick in here on top of those things? Um, I could probably put a lip gloss in this corner here and hand sanitizer, which is very important nowadays. Um, and maybe even like a thing of eye drops. Although these things might be carried inside of your um, mini pochette anyways, as a like a catch-all. But these things do fit inside. Let's try other combinations here. Let's take all this out. Take out the key pouch. Take out the mini pochette. So imagining that I'm not gonna carry any type of catch-all in here, I'm just gonna put in small things that I will carry with me throughout the day. So let's just say that I'm going to bring my Chanel uh, card holder. So let me just grab it here. Let's just say I'm gonna use my Chanel card holder. I'm gonna stick that in here. And this one I can actually stick standing up on its side like that and that way it frees up more room. I can put, obviously, my phone in here. Actually, I can put my phone standing up, possibly. No, I don't think it wants more. We'll do that on the side. I can put in my bulkier key pouch, my Prada one. Stick that in there, standing up as well. 
and there's still room in the middle so I could potentially put in like Lysol spray yep that would work um, again lip gloss maybe I'll put in a little pouch of Kleenex and that can go up there and there's still room on the side here actually Let's try putting that there. Okay, that's hidden. I've got these cheapy sunglasses from, um, I think it was Aldo or something, and I can stick that over here at the top. So once I stick my sunglasses in there at the top there, this would close like that. There we go, and nothing's really coming out the sides, nothing's really bulging and everything fits really well in there. So you can see it does fit, I mean, a decent amount, but for a bag this size, I would prefer that it was a little bit easier to get in and out of because if you were trying to get to my phone, for instance, I would have to play Jenga with this bag and kind of um, move things around strategically and everything has to have its own space, which I don't personally mind because I like to be organized like that, but sometimes it gets to the point where if it has to be that way, there's wise it won't fit, it gets a little bit finicky and annoying. So as you can see, got the key thing, got my wallet. If you wanted to fit a larger wallet in here, you definitely can, but I wouldn't recommend it because it wouldn't leave much room for anything else besides maybe a phone and maybe a couple of um, lip glosses or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's what fits inside of this boy bag. And I hope you guys found today's video helpful. If you guys have any, any other additional questions or comments that you'd like to make regarding the boy bag, please leave it down in the comment section below. And comment down below to let me know your thoughts on the boy bag, if you own one, what you think about it, and what your experiences are with it. Because for me, I absolutely love the bag. It's just unfortunate because I wish that I carry it a lot more than I do, which is why I included it in my life luxury regrets video from several months before but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to join our little community here that would mean a great deal to me as always thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch today's video and I will see you guys in my next one bye